This presentation will cover the basic procedure for preparing a quantitative method using any of the releases of version 7 of ClassVP or Easy Start software. This presentation makes the assumption that the user is familiar with the setting of data acquisition and processing parameters and knows how to create an analytical sequence file. The complete process involves six steps from beginning to end. This presentation will include description of all six steps which include standard data file acquisition, setting of appropriate integration event parameters, defining the peaks of interest for quantitation, setting the required information in the peak table which includes choice of external standard or internal standard quantitation, selecting a default calibration curve fit, and setting the concentration levels for the calibration standards. Calibrating the method based on analysis of the calibration standard data files and using the calibrated method to quantitate unknown or non-standard samples. Once the method has had appropriate instrument control and or acquisition parameters established, the method can be used to acquire a test chromatogram. This test chromatogram should be from a standard mixture that contains all the analytes of quantitative interest. It should be at sufficient concentration to make sure detection of all required peaks is easy. It should also be representative of the concentration range that will be used for calibration throughout the method. All new methods will contain default integration parameters. These are rarely the best choice for processing the peaks of the standard chromatogram. Follow the software procedure for setting more appropriate integration event parameters to produce the peak processing results that are optimal for the purpose of the method. As parameters are changed or added to the method, it is important to guard against loss of your work. Please save your method periodically to retain your new method settings. Once the integration of the chromatogram is satisfactory, the next step is to define the peaks that will be included in the peak table. This can be started very easily by clicking on the Define Peaks icon in the Integration Events toolbar, typically found at the bottom of the window. The Define Peaks applet will suggest that the peaks can be defined by graphically indicating the time range where the peaks of interest elute. This can be done by clicking anywhere before the first peak of interest, then clicking after the last peak of interest. Now with the peak range start and end points determined, the software will be able to list any integrated peaks in that time range. Once the peak range has been defined, a dialog display will appear that shows the time points used to define the start and end points of the range. In this display, it is possible to make a selection for the setting of the retention time window. The relative window selection sets the retention time leniency to a plus minus percentage of the peak retention time. This will calculate retention time windows that steadily increase in width. The absolute window allows selection of a fixed plus minus time range that would, by default, apply to all defined peaks. With either selection, the window width can be overwritten by the user in the peak table. It is also possible in this display to make an entry for the default concentration units for this set of defined peaks. This should be set to the same concentration units that will be used for the calibration standards. It is also possible to make a selection of the default quantitation type. The choice is to use either peak area or peak height for determining the peak response. These settings can also be made in the peak table. Lastly, the defined peaks can be added to the peak table automatically. If the method already contains peak information, pre-existing entries for matching peak times can be replaced if desired. Clicking OK closes this display and updates the peak table automatically. Opening the peaks and groups table will show that the peak information has been transferred. The only name that the software can find is related to the peak retention time. The peaks and groups table is where the software can find the information for identification of the peaks as well as all the information needed for performing calibration of the method. Therefore, this is the most important table in the software. It is recommended that any user who is interested in performing quantitation become very familiar with the functions of all the columns in this table. 
This presentation will only look at very basic settings for performing quantitation, so only a minimal set of columns will be examined. It is often more convenient to the user to be able to supply names for the peaks of interest. In the peak table, the peak names may be entered to a maximum of 50 characters. The internal standard ID column is where the selection can be made for quantitation by external standardization or internal standardization. If all the cells are set to zero, then the quantitation will be by external standardization, which simply creates calibration response factors from the ratio of the standard amount to the size of the standard peak. If the quantitation is to be by internal standardization, then a material is added, the internal standard, that does not match any of the peaks in the analysis. This material is added to all the calibration standard mixtures usually at the same concentration in each mixture. This creates a concentration ratio of the intended analyte to the internal standard material. The response factors are based on the ratio of the concentrations to the ratio of the peak sizes. To set the method for internal standard quantitation, the internal standard peak must be designated as well as which peaks will be using that internal standard for quantitation. In the example that is shown, if all of the internal standard ID cells were set to 2, then peak B, which is ID number 2, will be the internal standard peak. Peak A, peak C, and peak D will be ratioed to peak B for the internal standard calibration. The default calibration curve fit may be selected in the fit type column. While this is just an assumption of the correct curve fit before running the calibration standards, it can be changed after the standards have been completed. Scrolling further to the right in the table will come to the level columns. This is where the concentration for each calibration mixture must be entered. A level is a calibration standard mixture at the listed concentrations. In this example, there are four analytes and five levels. Therefore, each standard mixture or level will be analyzed for the presence of the four components. Each level will be expected to produce peak sizes that are proportional to the amounts listed for the concentrations in this table. This is a very good time to save the method again. Once the peak table has the necessary information entered, it is time to calibrate the method by correlating the amounts listed for the standards to the sizes of the peaks obtained via analysis. There are two common ways to accomplish this. The first is using the single analysis mode. This mode is intended for the analysis of one sample at a time. Therefore, it can be used with either manual injection or automatic sampling techniques. Because the analysis is being performed one at a time, the acquisition information must be entered prior to submitting each sample. Because this is for a calibration standard, the intent to use it as a calibration standard and which level it represents should be selected before analysis. The sequence analysis mode allows for many samples, including calibration standards and unknowns, to be analyzed as part of a predetermined series defined by the user. Sequence table that is used contains all of the acquisition information for all samples, including the standards. This, with an automatic sampling system, permits the samples to be run without immediate interaction from the user. All standard level designations for fully automated calibration should be entered before running the sequence. Here's an example of setting up the single analysis mode for calibration. This uses the sample entry form for the single run acquisition, the sample ID, method file name, the data path, and the intended data file name must be entered. The sample amount and internal standard amount are usually set to 1 for calibration analysis, but may be changed for unknowns depending on the analysis conditions. The injection vial position number must correspond to the correct standard sample vial. The injection volume must match the needs of the analysis and the capability of the instrumentation. To have the analysis automatically provide results to the calibration process, the Calibrate checkbox must be checked and the appropriate level number of the standard vial about to be analyzed must be entered. 
Selecting Clear All Calibration will clear out any calibration data that may have already been in the method, allowing the data to be automatically re-entered as the standard samples are analyzed. The Clear All Calibration should only be selected for the first standard of a calibration set. Otherwise, the calibration will only contain data for the most recently analyzed standard. The clear calibration for level can be selected for all standards as it replaces pre-existing calibration data one level at a time after each level has been analyzed. In this way, the method is never completely cleared of the calibration data. A sequence table is required for sequence calibration. This example shows a seven-line sequence, the first five lines of which are calibration standards and the last two are unknown samples. Analysis of this sequence should calibrate the method and produce quantitation results for the unknowns based on the results of the calibration. The Run Types column contains important selections for the processing of the data and reporting of results. The first line shows a run type of CAL, CAB, and CCA. These correspond to calibration, begin calibration, which generates a calibration response factor percent relative standard deviation comparison report, and clear all calibration, much like we discussed for the single analysis mode. The fifth line, or last standard, shows CAL for calibration and CAE for end calibration. This indicates that the calibration batch report can be completed. The calibration standard levels are indicated in their own column. It should be noted that an entry of zero into any cell of the level column forces the software to interpret the data from the analysis of that line as a non-calibration sample. This is typically used to designate unknown samples. Any integer value entered into the level column should correlate to the level definitions in the peak table. By analyzing the sequence, the software will automatically capture the data from the indicated standards. The results of the calibration can be viewed by clicking on the Review Peak Calibration icon in the icon bar. The individual peak data for all calibrated peaks is transferred into the peak calibration table. The standard amounts and the corresponding peak sizes are used to calculate the response factors. By plotting the concentration versus peak sizes, it is possible to see the resulting calibration curve. The regression of this curve yields the equation of the line, the goodness of fit, and the statistics pertaining to the consistency of the response factors. As the sequence is being completed, the method is continuously updated with the calibration results and automatically saved. Acquisition of the chromatogram of an unknown sample using the calibrated method will permit calculation of the concentrations of the analyte peaks based on the equation of the calibration curve line. The calibrated method can also be used in a reprocessing mode, either one file at a time or in a post-acquisition sequence to recalculate the quantitative results of previously acquired data files.